Connecting people and riches to generate prosperity. That's what drives us. And we do it in over 100 countries. We are present in a variety of areas, sometimes without anyone noticing. Because what motivates us is to help Anna and Paul with their business and fleet renewal. We innovate so that Mark feels safe on the road by investing in semi-trailers and auto parts technology. We work hard to ensure that Martha can get everything she needs for her family at the supermarket. We work to make sure the essentials reach you. That's what drives us. With a commitment to innovating, improving, and evolving the mobility you already know and the one we are creating. Randon Companies, together, innovating for a better future. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. In today's event, we will present the ambition ESG of Handon Companies, which was defined to guide a even more sustainable performance, generating value for all its audiences. We're going to present the pillars which sustain the ambition, which is corporate, including all the companies controlled by Handon including Frasley, which is also a listed company and is part of all this. So if you're watching us and is a shareholder of Frasley, be aware that our ambition presented here is 100% integ integrated by Frasley as well. We informed that by the end of the event, we'll have a session of question and questions and answers ESG but you can already send your questions throughout the presentations. If you're watching us on the website, ourambition.esg.com.br, all you have to do is write your question in the box above the video. In case you're watching on YouTube, click on the link below the video to be targeted directed to the site's event. We inform that this event is broadcast uh, by the page, also in English and in Spanish, and the version in Portuguese will be available through the channels of uh, Handon and Frasley on YouTube. It's important to highlight the recording of this event follows all the protocols of prevention uh, of COVID-19. And to start the presentations, let's uh, call CEO and President of Handon Companies, Daniel Handon. Boa tarde, Daniel. Seja Good afternoon, Daniel. Você Welcome. Could you tell us what is the importance ESG of the topic of the issue ESG tarde, for the Patricia. Handon companies? Good afternoon, Patricia. Boa tarde a todos Good afternoon, e a todas. everyone. Estou particularmente I muito feliz por estarmos reunidos aqui so, uh, hoje para falar sobre um tema tão relevante que é a sustentabilidade. Acredito que não existe futuro sem sustentabilidade, no sem pensar nas próximas gerações, em qual planeta estamos deixando para planet, nossos filhos uh, e netos, no respeito às pessoas e ao meio ambiente. E nas empresas Randon, a gente fala and muito Handon sobre companies, futuro. Valorizamos tudo que nos trouxe até aqui nessa jornada de sete décadas de história. E por respeito a tudo isso, nós trabalhamos muito por um crescimento sustentável. E a nossa certeza é de que esse futuro é colaborativo e sustentável. A pandemia de Covid-19 nos fez refletir em muitos aspectos, seja no âmbito pessoal, ou no uh, âmbito in a more personal way, Talvez in a more professional a way. Um Maybe we're living the moment with the most consciousness of mankind. And all the solutions, um they need to be reached with a systemic look, uh, integrated and collaborative, cooperative look. Nessa foto que escolhi para abrir uh, esse bate-papo com vocês, this chat with a gente viu um registro uh, feito pela NASA no momento em que partículas suspensas de areia do right deserto do Saara atravessam o Atlântico, em direção à floresta amazônica, 
uh, towards the Amazon forest. The desert sand contains very nutritious substances which contributes to the life of forest, which is a very big regulator of the world's environment. Why am I bringing this? That's exactly because this is a picture, it's a reflect of how very different ecosystems are integrated and its survival depends on such integration. The company sustainability is exactly this, to propose the business uh, view for, for a cooperation and working together, expanding the look of the economic pillar to the social, environment and governance pillars as well. At Randon Company, we always understand that our development has to be sustainable and with a positive impact on the communities where we perform. Our purpose is to connect people and richness, uh, generating prosperity. And when we talk about prosperity, we are referring to the development of society, the people's uh, well-being and this responsibility with the, pre uh, with the planet that we all have. And this is why we we're here, that's why we exist. In, in the last few years, we have been enhancing our initiatives towards ESG, aiming to face the global challenges and the business, always focusing on the contribution of a better world. From now on, we will present our ESG ambition with very specific aims, very specific goals, and most important is the awareness that we're going to seek for these goals, but always respecting our principles. Principles that we learned with our founders, our ethics that needs to be always present in our daily basis, and our purposes of connecting people and riches, generating prosperity. On this timeline, we have some of our initiatives targeted to environment, to social, and for governance. These are actions we have performed since the year 2000, and here you can see there are many initiatives that we're very proud of, but we know that we can and we will do a lot more. We're now giving a further step and organizing all this that already existed in our companies in terms of strategies and politics, but in a, in a more clear way, because we believe transparency and communication with our stakeholders are, is essential for an ethical relation aiming, uh, looking at the future. Simultaneously to launching our ESG ambition, we have also uh, taken part in the global pact proposed by uh, UN and uh, Handong companies, they are together in one of the biggest um, we have united with other governments in order to contribute with the main challenges of mankind. Since last year, we have conducted a very important research considering the challenges of the area, our programs, incentives, the stakeholder demands in order to identify which should be the focus on our ambition ESG for the next years. We have reached, we have created five pillars which will be presented throughout the, the meeting today. And these pillars reinforce the, the aim of our targets, our strat strategic objectives. They will talk about the structurance and the maintenance of a solid um, aggregating, va adding value to all the areas inside the company. The sustainable innovation, which gathers the innovation and collaboration actions, creating new solutions which are more sustainable. Prosperity for everybody, which can foresee actions to boost uh, the value generation for our employees, for our suppliers, and also the community. 
and the commitment with the environment, which involves the pillars of advancing uh, of eco-efficiency in our operation. In, before uh, moving on, I would like to remind you all that sustainability is not the destination, but is the way. And our journey didn't start now. We have been on it for over 70 years. The important is that we're clear where we want to go and that our posture is and will always be open to listen, to evolve, and sustainability is also not, not a choice, it's a responsibility. We have full awareness of how much our impact is and can be positive in the life of millions of people. We will always value the respect and care with people and, plan and the planet. And sustainability, or ESG, is the only way to reach such goals and put in, in, in practice our purposes and our principles. That's why this agenda goes through all areas of our business. Thank you once again for everybody following us. And it's back to you, Patricia. Thank you, Daniel. Let's get to know a little more of each pillar. Now, we, inve we invite for conducing the ethical conduct driving. We invite the CFO and I. Now, the word is yours. Welcome. Thank you for participating in such an important event for Handon. I'll start by talking about one of the pillars that in, in reality is about the ethical conduct and responsible in which we explore what we have done and which are our plans from now on regarding governance. And in reality, for us, we, we talk about this issue mainly related to, uh, to all, all of our stakeholders and the constant evolution regarding our transparency policies uh, with all the market. It's important to highlight our first subtopic when we talk about governance generating value. It's also important to talk about evolution and sustainability, that so you, in the end of the day, you can have access to our sustainability report, 2021. Uh, which brings very important advances uh, regarding the, the, the years past, the years before. Since 2009, we were used to bring some practices, but now, for the first time, we have gathered some metrics of the integrated report. So we invite you to evaluate this report because it brings very important uh, information uh, regarding all this evolution and also important metrics where year after year we're going to try to look and give more visibility to topics related to ESG. Speaking now about our strategic conduct, it's always important to highlight that Handon companies, from the first moment they became listed, they became public, and that goes for Handon shares, uh, also Frasli, were listed on the level one of governance. Uh, with all the requirements. Last year, we created the governance secretary. We have also created the portal of governments exactly to provide more safety and make the, the process flow better uh, from executive direction to the members of fiscal council 
and the Administration Council as well. And these are topics, as we always say, uh, we, we follow strictly all the regulations imposed by the organs, and our aim is constant evolution. We want to walk forward in a more transparent way, uh, more clear regarding everything we are doing. And it's also important to highlight our risk uh, policy, and last year we went through a new, uh, a new stage and it aims to give transparency and also to have a more close follow-up to the risks we are open to and a way we can transfer or at least uh, amortize a little in case they can happen. Another subtopic regards the ethical and responsible conduct, which is also constantly evolving. Uh, we have some important pillars here, which are basically a, a number of directions, guides, which talk about a number of issues, and they uh, have all been published, and they are available to the market, uh, both on Handom and Frasley websites. They follow strictly our ethical channel exactly to, to provide this, this comfort, this transparency to the people who can make any kind of claim. And we also have a, a training for all the publics, the internal publics. The public, the, this platform is called For You, and it provides training, it provides tools, and this also brings uh, transparency and comfort for our more than 12,000 employers. We're also we're also signatories of the platform Ethos, and that is exactly because we're a clean company regarding the treatment and very strict rules regarding uh, anti-corruption. Uh, that's it for, for me, and Patricia, that's back to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paulo. And undoubtedly, this event of presentation of ESG ambitions, which is open to all the audiences, uh, reforces even more your final speech. And to continue the presentation of pillars, we're going to call the vice president, the vice executive president and COO of Randon and CEO of Frasli, Sergio Carvalho. Sergio, good afternoon. You may have the word. Good afternoon, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank your participation, your support. It's a big satisfaction to be here to talk about some of the pillars of our ESG ambition. And today, to start, I would like to talk about the environment. Our approach is quite comprehensive, quite detailed. We have a very dedicated structure. We have uh, we verify. We have very aggressive targets uh, which cover all the ecosystem. But we might be more focused in certain aspects such as the maintenance or the combat to, to climate change, developing products which are more eco-friendly, uh, also called circular economy, which is the best use of resources available. Our company perf performs in such a way for over 25 years and our first controlled company, Frasley, was the first to get f uh, ISO 14001 regarding the environment. So over 24, 25 years ago that happened. And after that certification, all the other companies, they came 
one after the other getting the certification. So we have been performing this way for many, many ways. Last year, we had 8.6 million reais invested in environment management. management. Uh, we had some reduction on the energy consumption in all the operations. We have reached 58.8% on the reuse of water to our operations, 65.4% recycling the waste generated in our operation. 1.5 ton of material have been recovered re with the so-called reverse logistics. In Frasley, we had around 900 tons of friction material, material that after the mechanics replace, instead of throwing away in the environment, we, we collect the, the raw material, for example, uh, the break disks. Uh, we recollect this material inside Frasli and we reprocess. As I said on the, the brake disc, we melt to make new, new discs. So in a way, we're feeding the circular economy. And 37% of raw material coming from recycling. Now, a program we would really to talk to you about is the Green Root program. It's a very wide program, very detailed, uh, with very ambitious targets covering all the aspects of sustainability associated to the environment. Our aim, our idea was to launch this program a year ago in the second quarter of 2020, but given all the situation of pandemic, we decided to prioritize combating the pandemic and postpone it. So now we're announcing this program. We have basically here three categories of ambition. One is reduction. The other is uh, the increase. And one hour, one area that is the zero challenge. So, so you understand a little better. The first one, the reduction. Our goal is to reduce from 40 by by 2030 40% the greenhouse effects. We want to reduce the energy consumption and also the water consumption. Uh, increasing, we want to increase. Uh, the log reverse logistics, uh, products and processes eco-friendly, circular economy, conversion, conversion rates improving, um, and we also want to work a lot uh, which are more friendly to the environment. We want, we want to use more uh, alternative energy sources. And in the middle of this line, we have the zero challenge. We want to bring to zero the effluent uh, production and also by 2025 uh, the, the waste the waste in industrial land fields we want to become to zero by 2025 and in the greenhouse uh, gases by 45 percent until 2030. A little more detailed, uh, we have this commitment reducing 40 percent of the emissions of gases, uh, greenhouse uh, gases until 2030. In 2020, we were able to reduce 47,000 tons of CO2, uh, measured according international criteria. If you look on your right side on the graphic, you can see the ring that saying that there are many categories like uh, the, the stationary combustion showing 48 percent, the electric power 35, the mobile combustion. We have on these three categories over 90 percent of our emissions and we are categorizing them as in uh, one and two. 
the stationary combustion we are referring to gases such as presses, ovens, uh, although in, in Brazil it can be through the, the plant powers, it's very used, but it's not considered as clean, considering uh, wind energy or solar energy is not considered as clean. Uh, there, there is some uh, CO2 production in some dams, and for that reason it's not considered as clean. And the mobile com combustion has to do with the movements we have, uh, the forklifts, gas, uh, fueled by gas, and other, and other things. And our main goal here is to reduce by 40%, but in, in how? We want to reduce significantly the usage of energy, and for that we're using more solar energy, uh, eolic energy, uh, energy, but I would say more solar, reducing more the natural gas consumption through very specific projects, and also the replacement of uh, machine machinery that generates this negative contribution inside our operations. The second element is our zero challenge regarding the, the land fields, the disposition of land fields, the wasting land fields. Today, 77% of our waste, uh, they have a sustainable destination, but we still have to find a solution for the 23% left, which are more focused on using cast sand. And we have a very important product to reuse this, this cast sand as a raw material to, to create, to produce new materials. So the idea is to bring this number to zero by 2025. And the third element important here is uh, the effluents. Just to understand, we already treat our effluents, but we only reuse 59%. And we want to increase this number by 100%. And we're going to do that using a reverse osmosis uh, process, and then we will have projects uh, first in Randon, then in Frasle, then in etc., depending the place. The idea here is also to bring this number to zero by 2025. Bringing to the next pillar excellence and safety as a, as a value. We already have a very robust approach regarding people, regarding the integrity. And this value for us, there, there is no negotiation on this value. It, the priority here is very high regarding any other objectives we have in the company. And when we talk about safety, we're talking in a very wide way, we're talking about the, the, the employee safety, data, product, and our goal is to keep on being this, this reference, in all these areas, to keep on being a reference. And speaking more specifically about the products, we have very robust products processes, we have certifications of all norms, strict controls in our chain, we have monitoring and continuous improvement, we produce uh, pro products which are free of restrict sub substances, we have um, a, number, uh, uh, a number of things on our performance which is very high and our goal is to maintain this goal and to increase the bar. We already have a place of reference, but let's elevate this bar to keep on improving more. Second part is related to safety, uh, health and work safety. Our policy is very clear, we have excellent centers, we have all the certifications, 
We have launched a program called Attitude Can Change a Life, engaging all the, the employees. We have our own health plan, self-management, uh, just to call your attention to 2019, our rate of serious uh, wounds, of serious accidents related to work, it was 0 0.306. And 2020, you can see the reduction, 0.058%. And that happens, this big reduction happened because we did a big mapping using an international methodology evaluating the critical risks of our company. And just to give you a dimension of it, we have invested over 50 million reais in the last few years. Just this year, we're around 29 million reais being invested only in safety. So our public commitment here is to bring to zero the number of serious accidents, labor accidents. And finally, uh, information security and uh, data privacy. Uh, cyber security is uh, among the most uh, treated and prioritized risks uh, by the company. We have invested a lot of financial resources to protect us more and more to, to, to work our safety culture. But also general data protecting laws. We have studied a lot of this new legislation in the year of 2020. We have created uh, privacy governments for, for, for data. Uh, we created a committee with all the directors participating from all the business. We have created a policy privacy and personal data to protect this data, to protect our clients as well. Uh, criteria for monitoring, continuous monitoring in a way that we we can have uh, very important investments as well to bring to our data safety, data security. And so we can talk a little about our new pillar. I would like to talk uh, to, to call Daniel Eli, who is the CTO of Handon Companies and Together with me, we will talk about a new pillar. And while Daniel joins Sergio for the presentation, we would like to invite we would like to invite you to send your question for the question and answer sessions. To participate, just use the box below the video. And if you're watching the video on YouTube, please click on the link to access the event's website. Now, back to Sergio Daniel. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Sergio. A big pleasure to be here today sharing about the pillars, about the strategic ambitions. And now we have a challenge to tell you in a few minutes to talk about the sustainable innovation. Since 1949, we're moved by innovation. By But one of the things we have seen is that we need to speed more because it will bring the business sustainability and the impact generated by the business. And this innovation can be both in products and in process, in services. So we're going to talk a little about that. And in the end of the day, what we want is what's on the screen. We're, we're making a public commitment to enhance even more the profit of the group uh, from products processes, services. This circle here is showing you that Handon is not only looking at evolution innovation, the normal evolution, it is also looking at new technologies, what we call a more, uh, more transformational, disruptive innovation. And at the center of the circle, we have a number of initiatives inside the group which are looking from both sides, uh, 
from products, processes, services, and this is what we're going to tell you. Before Sergio starts to talk about it, I, I want to say that this is all... The, it's all surrounded by cultural transformation, which is the light blue circle. If we are here today uh, trying to increase our, our profit, it's because this journey comes from years ago, a transformation of culture, uh, which makes us today as a more agile company in order to incorporate these opportunities. So looking at the next slide, this disruptive innovation brings many, many new things for the group. We're over a year now, we have created the Handon Ventures, and we work very connected today um, with other companies and other startups in a very communicative way. We have over startup, 50 startups connected to the group. And today we have, uh, Sergio will talk about some projects which already happen with the startup partnerships, and some are even invent, uh, invested by Handon Ventures. Another important pillar in the last years bringing new possibilities to us are the digital business. Besides having important partners to help us boost this movement, we're also bringing this competence also inside Today we have artificial intelligence competence, data run, blockchain, the automation of processes uh, in the administration or uh, operational, and this all brings a more competition and productivity uh, advantage. And speaking about financial services, since we already have the bank and the consortium, now we can also see a bigger business that we're now called calling Handon Service Platform, that we're making available some financial services, uh, transactional, logistic, for all the segments we work, which are transports and logistics. These are some news that are coming, but it shows that the company is looking at the future. Something we never stopped caring was the innovation in products, process, and technology. Uh, and now you can talk about this, Sergio. First of all, it's good to see our company that is uh, so such a traditional company like us investing so much in innovation and technology in the area of services like you show with Handon Venture and the work with startups is something that is really wonderful and as Daniel said, we're, we're still investing a lot in the most conventional areas, which also create a lot of disruptive innovation and evolutive innovations. The, the products, as you can see in the first pillar, which are led by the Technological Handon Center and Ercilio Handon Institute, we develop uh, more advanced t products, more innovative products, which are very important for our future. But we started this initiative in 2017. We have created this group focused on that. Uh, and we were so happy with the results that last year we decided to create Handon uh, Tax Solution Industries to do the same thing we were doing in products to do now in our industrial products, in manufacturing. So the main goal of this group is to invest in technologies, uh, in specific technologies, so we can maintain our competitive um, advantage in handling intelligent manufacturing, which is our version of uh, 4.0 manufacturing. But in this moment, mainly in automation, as you might remember, in, in other moments, we mentioned that in 2020, we invested very heavy in robots so we could accelerate, uh, speed our transformation, our industrial transformation. But beyond that more advanced area of products and transformation, all the units have their innovation areas of uh, research and development. Uh, we have over 90 million of investments in this area, over very important, uh, 40 products, very important. 80% of our profit comes from products developed in the last years. 
More than 45% of the products from Frasli were developed in the last years. And this is what Daniel mentioned. We want to, to boost this market more and more. When we look to the future, these mega trends, what are we doing regarding that? Just so you understand the graph, the circles, the white circles, they represent the amount of initiatives we had in 2020, and the blue represents uh, the same number of initiatives, but for 2021. So we have three categories, the first of mobility and electrification, maybe here the best example would be the development of our electric trailer, which we will be talking further in, which was very important. We had some projects on, on electronics, on boarding, now we have uh, were three projects versus five this year, maybe the best example could be the creation of our own ABS brake system and in smart materials. Last year we had nine projects, this year we have ten. And these smart materials has everything to do with environment. They are alternative materials which are much lighter than the equivalents in metal. They have a whole new technology specific to go with them. But every kilo the, all, all the projects, they have a big weight reduction in their final vehicles. And with that, also a reduction of the, the fuel. And that goes, that generates a lot of uh, carbon credits, which you should be listening more in the fu future. Carbon credits. Uh, smart materials has a lot to do with that. So in 2020, we had nine. Uh, 16 projects in 2020, 21 in 2021. And to finish, we spoke about our electric trailer, and maybe this is our most iconic project on this matter, because all the technology, all the national technology, the intellectual technology developed in the south of Brazil, we created an electric system in which, uh, in a, in a combination of mechanical horse and, 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 and trailer. You have a sort of traction on the, on the way up that removes a bit of the load of the horse and which reduces the, the fuel consumption. And going down using the brake, instead of the brake's energy becoming too heat for the environment, it will automatically recharge the batteries, such as an F1 car, or even a hundred, uh, full electric car. All this system has been developed by us. It reduces the fuel consumption from, uh, a, a, there's a big reduction from 10 to 15%, and all this reduction will be very positive for the environment. We'll be, we will generate a lot less greenhouse uh, gases and this whole performance for the final, the economy for the final clients, the improvement for environment, we enhanced the, secu the safety, we have also improved the, the return to our clients. Thank you, Sergio. I think the ECS uh, couldn't be a better project to bring the next topic, which is to be an open innovation platform and to connect startups and, and new companies. Uh, I, uh, there, there are nine companies and five startups involved in the ECS project. If we, have, if we haven't advanced, uh, here I want to show you how we make this innovation. We have the Ercidio Randon Institute. This is a technology institute focused more on products and connecting with international research uh, centers, national as well. Also, we have Connects, in which we place challenges for, for all, some of our challenges, so maybe other entrepreneurships or other startups can connect. And a very big step we have taken in the last two or three years, and it's helping to help. This is the LSE Institute. Today we have here in our region companies working together to work com on common products. And many of these products are, uh, pro these problems are being solved with 
solutions a startup place in the market. So when we talk about co cooperative innovation, is an open platform which allows us uh, not, not to try to solve our problems in, in our four walls, but connecting to all the people who want to advance with us. I believe the sustainable innovation stops here, and I move with the next pillar. Thank you, Sergio. Now, speaking about the next pillar, which is prosperity for everyone, this new pillar, it symbolizes very well some of the things we have never stopped worrying, one of our values, which is to value and respect people and to connect people and riches generating value. So there is no point for us to, uh, you know, to create innovation, to have new profits, uh, but this has to generate an impact in now the community, in all the regions we are involved. We have said uh, a lot about it, but I'm going to share some situations here with you. A very robust politics of uh, human resources in which we we try to develop our people, we try to develop the skills on our people, the future, but also in, in all of our supply chain, our partners as well. We have been working for a very since very early age with the program for you, which is 100% online, and they have development opportunities, but we have never forgotten the young talents. This has always been in our DNA, to focus on the education, our pro program Florescer, which is uh, Bloom, the young apprentice after uh, to qualify, and all this process of, of acceleration and sustainability, it goes a lot on the development of our leaderships. Today, uh, we're very engaged, and today we're just speakers here, but this is a commitment from all the company, from all the, the, the people involved mainly our leadership. But also we have started on a very important topic, which is diversity. Uh, we're still doing our homework here. It can be very challenging in, in many of the regions we are because of the cultures we have. But we're facing in a very... Uh, say we're, we're very sure that we're going to have some commitments regarding uh, diversity and on this issue of diversity and inclusion one of the starting points uh, one of the public commitments we we want to start is a bigger share of uh, women in management positions Today, as a starting point, we have 11%. Uh, only 11% of our leadership is formed by women. We could talk about a number of reasons, but what matters is that we need to move forward and we want to, by 2025, we want to double this number of people or, or even more this percentage. We are an industry, we are a heavy industry, we are in a segment, we, we still need to adopt new processes to to feed this, this development regarding women management, but we will also work with other ideas which are inside our diversity program uh, happening in the company around a year now. We're not disclosing so much because we understand this first step is our inner education process as leaders. Uh, but once that happens, those first steps that we can see the first results, then we can share more with you everything that has been done. But, but this is a commitment now. It's a public commitment from now on until uh, 2025. Education-wise, uh, we have invested over 7.7 .7 million reais in programs targeted to the social development of communities in the regions where we perform. We, we joke that we go from six 
to 60 in terms of age. We start with Florecer, which is the first picture, which is over a decade inside uh, Handong groups and uh, which are uh, bringing uh, education to, to kids in social vulnerability. Today we, we have 360 kids in the program, 78 teenagers who have been benefited. And once they finish that, they can go to our professional qualification. Uh, so usually between 15, 16 years old, there is a lack of qualification in Brazil, and then we bring them to inside the company and provide qualifications. And after um, 16, they will have a proper qualification to after be hired by hand-on companies. And we, we stimulate the, the volunteers with that. And we our process always focus on kids, on a focus on... Um, traffic, we are uh, widening our options, our range of options to benefit the community where we are. And to, to finish, but not last but not least, we have over 4,763 suppliers to hand on groups, and 94% of the suppliers are Brazilians. And we understand our responsibility to develop all the chain. Uh, giving support to ESG in other targets as well to all of the chain. So today we already have very robust projects from from selecting, developing our suppliers. We have a portal which we feed with a lot of information and knowledge as well. But annu annually we have a supplier summit and from now on, uh, on, on the awards we have, we have created the sustainability category to highlight these uh, suppliers as well. Sorry to go through so fast, but it's a way of showing that for you to have such a range uh, variety, a range of options, it's, it, it didn't happen now. We have been doing this for a very long time. And now what we want to do is to provide more and more uh, conditions to move forward. Thank you very much. And it's back to you, Patricia. Thank you, Daniel. Now that you already know the five pillars of acting, uh, uh, ESG acting, now we will call Daniel Randon, the CEO, to talk about our ESG ambition. Daniel. Thank you, Patricia. First, I would like to thank the board, uh, the board uh, council, Davi Randon, and all the other members of the board who support us, the, the board committee, the executive board, Paulo, Sergio, and all the managers, the leaderships uh, from, from Handon Group who worked so we could make this project uh, feasible, putting some targets, some ambitions, who are which are very challenging for all of us. And we have many aims on the ESG agenda and today we make public five of our commitments for a better future so to reduce by 40 percent the emission of uh, greenhouse uh, effects by 2030 which is a very uh, totally committed with the NU agenda then to become zero the disposition of wastes in industrial land fields and the affluence by 2025, uh, to make our net profit consolidated annually, generated by new products, to become zero the number of zero uh, of serious accidents. We believe that through innovation we can guarantee the sustainability of company and we can make a better world for next generations. In the end, to duplicate, to double the number of women in positions of leadership by 2025, because we know that uh, the more diverse is our way of being and acting, bigger are the opportunities to develop and generate a positive impact for society. 
Today, we leave a very important milestone for, Ma for Handong Group. Today, we believe this, this is a very memorable day for our company because we know sustainability is how we live our daily routines, is the excellence of the products, the health, the safety of the people. The care with the communities, the innovation for technologies, uh, for cleaner technologies. It's how we continuously choose to be a company very attentive to a better world, to a more sustainable future. This is what moves us. Thank you all. Now back to Patricia. This is what moves us. Thank you very much. I reinforce we have a few more minutes so you can send your question through the site's event. And now we would like to invite the relation with investors, directors, Randon Frasli, Esteban Angeletti and Emerson de Souza to share with us the sustainability reports from Randon and Frasli, which were disclosed to the market in the morning, uh, in today's morning. Good afternoon, Emerson. Good afternoon, Esteban. Thank you. Good afternoon, all of you following this event. For us, it's so good to be able to share such a relevant topic for investors and capital market. Today, we have presented our commitments, our strategies to reach these commitments. But it's important to remember we will never abandon the profitability because we, we believe that profitability and sustainability, sustainability, they must walk hand in hand. Another point I like to highlight is that sustainability can be a very uh, current topic, but it's far from being new to handle. Right, Emerson? Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being with us. Uh, it's been almost two decades we have uh, reported to the market these initiatives uh, in these areas. Frasli, most specifically, in the last 10 years, we also make this segregation because Frasli is also a listed company. It has uh, stakeholders which are a bit different from Handel, although that there is some convergence in the middle. And I'm very happy to be here today and see all the evolution that we can report throughout these decades. I would like to invite you now to watch a little summary of what we made available on the reports today, both in Handel and Frasli, which are, which are available on our uh, investor relationships websites. So you can further in uh, uh, late the, uh, read them uh, thoroughly. So now I would like to call a video so you get to know them.
We're now going to start our session of questions and answers, which will be answered by our executive team of Randon, Daniel Randon, Sérgio Calvalho, Paulo Prigolato e Daniel Eli. If your question was not answered live because of time limits, don't worry, after event, all the questions will be answered by Randon or Frasli teams. Let's go with the first question, which will be targeted to Sergio Carvalho. How do you intend to become agents in the process of reduction of uh, pollutant emission in the industry of heavy vehicle? We believe you are referring to products and not to our industrial mean. And as we mentioned before, that through our system, uh, ECs, our electrical uh, trailer, so to speak, maybe this is the best example, the best uh, answer to your question. We created a system that uh, when we use a semi-trailer, it reduces a lot the consumption of fuel and that way contributing a lot to the reduction of uh, greenhouse uh, gases. And that also brings a number of benefits to the users of such systems. And these technologies we developed, they are so important that two uh, truck manufacturers in, in a global scope, they are working with us. They have requested our development using a uh, technology developed by us. So we're committed, very committed, to make the difference in this segment of commercial, heavy commercial vehicles with very friendly, eco-friendly technologies. Thank you very much. Now, Daniel, the question is for you. We have a question. The sustainability strategy of Randon is associated to initiative, initiatives of the area. Which areas add value to Randon? Thank you, Caterini. Since last year, we have done this work of identifying together with our stakeholders which could be the main the main demands to search for ESG uh, challenges. And one of the main points to highlight is innovation, sustainable innovation. Two main points of this sustainable innovation, looking at the digital transformation, the company has worked with big challenges and opportunities, mainly looking the ecosystems, uh, the Alice Institute, like uh, Daniel Eli presented, the Transform RS, which are ecosystems we believe uh, which are important to develop our company in a more sustainable growth. Another pillar 
about the electrical axis and the Handon Technology Center, they have brought a lot of opportunities looking at materials, which we call smart materials besides uh, innovation and reduction of, of uh, greenhouse uh, gases, but more uh, lighter materials with less impact, they have been very positive. Another important pillar on the social area is that the Handon companies, they have worked a lot on this education view, not just young people, but also the transit in the traffic education, because we know the impact we have in the automotive area, commercial vehicles in Brazil, in other countries as well. Thank you, Daniel. Next question. What is the investment balance to find, uh, to, to have results in all the challenges mentioned versus the benefit of the results to be reached? Paulo. Thank you for your question. We understand this, these targets, these goals, they are quite challenging, but two important aspects to be highlighted here. First is that we have incorporated this uh, uh, ESG ambition as uh, an integrant part of our strategic planning. So it will be on our daily routine in our monthly monitoring. We will monitor this evolution. Besides, it has been well discussed and debated with all our leaders. The, the balance itself, it's important to highlight that our investments, they are based on our cash generation. So we will always keep our financial discipline, but also looking for a balance in a way that we are not uh, too committed with our financial boosting, which is our commitment that is always to be in a uh, liquid uh, one to two liquid net uh, with EBITDA. This is our main goal. Thank you for your participation. What was the rationale for Handon to adopt the goal to duplicate the amount of women in leaderships in the company? Once the goal has been uh, met or even overcame, what are the results you wait to see regarding this action, because of this action? Our rationale was first to challenge ourselves to double what we have done until now, during 70 years. But we're a company inside the heavy industry. We want to get to this 22% minimally. But our goals internally, we, we want to overcome these numbers, yes. The issue about developing, preparing other groups, they are also uh, being studied with Hando. We're not just working with the gender question. We're also working with other uh, affinity groups, such as uh, L, uh, L, the, the LGBT, about races, uh, disabled. So we have a structured situation in Handon, uh, as Paulo said. So all these goals, once they are open, once they are public, or even our internal goals, they have to be linked to our strategic planning. So that's why we were very convinced that uh, from a starting point, we have homework, we know. We, have, we can make it uh, faster and make it happen in a very robust way throughout the next years. What is the number of investments you expect in order to, to have the SG targets announced today? What is the amount of money expected in terms of investments to find, to meet the goals on ESG announced today? Uh, Paulo said in the question before, we have a strategic view well defined for the next uh, for the next many years, and, and this view is very detailed. 
it involves all of our projects associated to ESG, which is the source of your question, but also all the investments necessary in productivity, in expansion of capacity, um, initi strategic initiatives. I could say the investments here, they are very significant. But to clear something, everything we do in Handong companies, we try to, to, to have synergy and we try to f go through a lot of things simultaneously. So, for example, for us to reduce the consumption, the CO2 consumption in our companies, we, we have the intention, I don't know if you remember, but the first we, we need to reduce the gases used in our manufacturing projects, uh, processes. So we're trying to come up with solutions to minimize the reduction, the, the emission of these gases. We have sources of gases which are related to welding. We are creating products which are going to reduce the welding necessity we need in our operations. So this investment is very relevant, very significant, but it, it's also we're going to launch more technologies in products that will help us grow and at the same time making investments to reduce the greenhouse uh, gas effects. All our projects, they always have this idea of uh, making multiple targets. I can tell. I can't tell you exactly the because we don't disclose exactly the numbers of investments, but they are very relevant for the next five years. And with that, we finish this space of question and answer. Thank you very much for sending your questions. We would like to also thank the executive committee of Handon Group for solving the questions. They really show us that Handon Group believe that the future is not a border. The future is an opportunity of building the new. Uh, even better new for being responsible and efficient. And to leave uh, his final message, we would like to invite the presidents, the presidents of the Administration Council of Handon, Davi Handon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to thank you all for your presence in such an important moment here. It's important to highlight that this event is a very important event. It's, it's a milestone of our commitment as a company uh, before everything that has been mentioned as president of Handon Groups and, and Frasli and the administration board, I would like to highlight here that this commitment we are uh, making here, it's a commitment that will make us to, will take us to a better future. Uh, I would like to highlight throughout the, the presentations you could see, you could see that there is a, a big intensity of work being done in the ESG management, and that shows we're very focused, and we want, particularly speaking, that this can make more and more to make us stronger and let uh, make the future with big promises. 
I would like here in the name of the of the board to say that we are all involved, we're all engaged, not just the council, the, the, the board, but the managers, the directors, all the teams. So for the future of Handon companies that we can make all these movements, all this work and making this um, these ways of work that we can make this future can can follow for more 70 years of life so thank you all for being here today thank you so much thank you davi and we're coming to the end of our event we would like to thank you all for the audience and we would like you to invite to answer our satisfaction survey you can who can which can be found in the events website or accessing through the qr code that you can access now thank you very much good afternoon to you all